I don't know what it is because it's so perfect. But there is a level that says, the, the, there's a level there where I look at it and I'm like, who edited that? When you edited Vision, I knew who fing edited it. <laughs> yeah. You know, because, yeah. because there, was, there, was a little, there, was, there was some, yeah. D, there was some you DNA in it, right? Mm -hmm. When you look at the DNA of process, there's highly skilled people behind it. But where's the elements of their fucking fingerprint? Welcome back to another episode of Around the Bar presented by Center Sparkling CBD. It's a podcast and a show where I invite somebody on to have a drink and have a chat and ask them a few questions. Today, we have none other than Hector Rodriguez, otherwise known as Optic Hex. He's the CEO and owner of Optic Gaming, as well as an owner of the Pine Park Cannabis Company, Good Good Golf, Guggen Squad, and much more. He's also a world-renowned content creator that has made many daily vlogs, gaming content, and he also is the host of an award-winning podcast series himself called The Eavesdrop Podcast and uh, where he interviews a bunch of people within the gaming scene and surrounding gaming culture. Today we are drinking hamacaritas. I practiced that, I don't know if, if you could tell. It consists of tequila, hibiscus tea, lime juice, and of course, it's got a little bit of tahini on the rim. Also stick around after the podcast and check out the exclusive extension of the podcast called Behind the Bar. You can find that on the Optic Nation membership program. It's a show where we play beer pong while Matt asks us funny questions and we try to compete with the rest of the guests that have also been on Around the Bar. At the end of the season, someone will go home with a trophy. Thank you guys so much for watching and enjoy this interview and discussion with Optic Hex. Welcome back to another episode of Around the Bar. Today, I'm sitting beside my brother, uh, Hector Rodriguez. What are we drinking today? Uh, I'm assuming this is what is called a, uh, a Jamaicarita, Ooh. which is a margarita, but instead of whatever they put in there. It's margaritas it, from our people. It's, it's Jamaica. Ooh. Hibiscus water for your, for your side of town. <laughs> for your side of town. Let me try this. It's not as good as the one that they made at LME. Uh, so the guy that made it's this, pretty good. well, I'm is, starting to like. I'm starting to like tequila. Though. Do, do do you have different bartenders or what the fuck is Damn. Austin Cox doing here? Damn, because no. he's the only one that knows the true taste of what this is, aside from Omens and Revise, and those who have gone to LME. No, I was gonna hire uh, a bartender, and then uh, Austin and I went to went somewhere, and he was like, "Yeah, I used to bartend," and I was like. I was like, how good were you? And he was like, I used to be able to spin shit and the do, fuck? The, do the fuck. You know I what believe I mean? it. I believe it. I mean, look at him, man. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good, though. Uh, you, you stopped drinking a while ago. When, I, when we first met, you were, on your, you were on your drink grind. Yes, I was. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's uh, only on Thursdays. I was a professional drinker. Yeah. Um, it was Thursday. I figured Friday we can, t we can take it. I, I wasn't going to drink Friday, Saturday, heading into Championship Sunday. Yeah. I had, to, I had things to do, interviews to do, talk to people, and yeah. different Dude. things. Is it, is it appropriate to squeeze the lime? Dude, it's yours. You can you squeeze can the it. lemon, lime anytime you want. I'll put that, I'll put that in. Yeah. Did, did you, outside of events and stuff, did you, did you drink? Not really. No? No. Nah, growing up, I never drank. I was a straight edge all through high school. Ooh. I made, but, but not because. Only because I want to be different, like like some I don't know some, something's wrong up here mm -hmm. that like makes me go out of our way my Same. way to uh, well, you know what? I've been saying our it's me and the pilot up here, right? There's sense and then there's ego. There's two of us. That's why I say it makes us do weird shit. You got like you got multiple personalities up there. I think me and Dexter have a lot in common, <laughs> minus the minus the killing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> no, okay, no, couldn't do it. Okay, I'm not even a good hunter, as far as yeah. I. I see my dog. I will see my dogs' faces in, on the on the mm. on the wild board. I don't care how wild they are. I don't care yeah. if they like to party. I don't give a fuck. For some reason, my like my Instagram reels are like mm. there's some hunting stuff coming up, mm. and like uh, like archery and stuff. And they're like, whoosh, and then big old elks are falling. And then the hunters are like, yeah. Part of me, I don't know if it's like the the pussy side, but part of me is like, man. I can't watch those. 
the, the animals, though. But yeah. then I go and eat a burger. Oh, not this year, but no, no, then no. I'll go and eat a burger. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I feel bad, too, until Justin Rackley or, or Rob Turkle comes through with all 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 the processed mm-hmm. meats of, of elk. And then I'm like... You got elk jerky. Let's, and- let's go, Team Humans. <laughs> and I'm anti-Team Human all the time. I'm anti-Human. Anti- Anti-Team Anti-Human? Yeah, Team Anti-Human. Like when there's a... like. Uh, the the bullfighters. Okay. I'm team bull. Yeah, you want them to take them down. Oh, I, yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah. I get what you're saying. You're kind of cheering for them a little bit. Oh yeah. Hell for sure. Yeah. There's a uh, so so you 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 stop drinking. Mm-hmm. Why is that? Because of you just fell out of love with it. It's because of the. I. I, I not not I got you're old. in love with it. I got old yeah. and uh, hangovers last longer and just not my thing. Yeah. I um I smoke smoke weed. That's my mm-hmm. thing. That's how I decompress. But you were saying straight edge in, in high school, so no weed, no liquor? Or Not until I graduate. Graduation night is the first time that I, well, when I was a little kid, call it four or five years old, uh, either my dad or my uncle gave me some beer. Um, mm. But it was during a hot summer Juaritos uh, day. It was a barbecue, and everybody came over, and those hot kawama, just sitting there, kawama, it's a 40, um, of Tecate, my favorite beer if I was to drink uh, a beer. But he gave me some. He said, "He's here. Try some." And it was sitting in the sun, and it's the bottom of it. Mm. Oh, never again! I Disgusting. said, "I'm good. Yeah. Not my thing." Did you think you did that on purpose? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. I, I've been trying to do that till well, not anymore, right? Because it lives thirteen. But when she was <laughs> do like, "You want four. this cigarette?" <laughs> <laughs> I, that happened too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think everyone. Not well, the, not everyone, but you got like uh, you got grandparents that try to make it seem disgusting so you don't do it. I always said I would never have a cigarette, and then I broke that last year. I had a cigarette. For the first time ever? Yeah. I've had one my entire life. Yeah. Was it good? No. Not my thing. Yeah, unfortunately, mine was fucking amazing. Mine was so good. But I'll never have another one. Hey, I don't know what, what, like, what do you feel? Like, you've smoked weed before. But, you smoked. Yeah, well. I don't think I've ever asked that question to, like, why do people do that? I had, like, the, the fake kind, the, the kind where you, like, pinch the ball in it, and it is, it's um, menthol. Menthol. Camel Crush. Camel Crush. Matt bit. knows. That's, that, that's Matt, where, does Matt have a mic? Yeah. yeah. They uh, were invented in, uh, in fraternities. So Matt knows exactly, <laughs> exactly what's smoke, what smoking what. But it, feel like, it felt like a mint going mm-hmm. down. But that's, that's pretty much it. But like, weed is so much better, man. So, it tastes better. It's crazy because when, when I, I can smell right now, and when I can smell weed, it's like, oh, it's so good. Oh, I thought you were going to say the opposite. No, no, no. no. A lot of people thought it was going to be the opposite. But no, nah, I like the burning. Maybe it's because like some people I've been around, uh, they smoke like the cigar papers, mm-hmm. and that smells so good to me. Mm-hmm. Swishers, but, or the backwoods, I think. Not my thing. What do you do? Just papers? Just papers mostly. Um, every so often, when I'm in California, I do like a bong hit. Just yeah. to really. The thing is, is that more often than not, if I see my calendar and there's no more meetings, and I know that Jude and Liv know that I'm you know, in California for yeah. for work, and I have, like, no duties. Like, I have to be home to ha- go have dinner with the family, which is not a duty. It's, like, I, I love doing that. Uh, I just let loose. Um, I just, like, the same way as I, the, those Thursdays and during MLG. Yeah, days, yeah. Know? Wait, but those are, these are way more, chill, way more chill. Oh, yeah, dude. I'm, it's the best thing. I, uh, <laughs> I, I've, I found that when I turned 38, 39, that mm-hmm. hangovers were hitting different. And there was, to me, at that time, there was nothing better than to be in bed by, like, 9, 9.30. Yeah. Yeah? I can't wait. Yeah, dude. I got, like, five more years. Yeah, no, it's a, I, I always say I'm going to be the freshest, the, the freshest dressed grandpa. <laughs> also the most stern and old school. Like, I'm going I'm to go, this is the, 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 the period in my life in which I will start acting. And I'm going I'm to be overly, like, the grumpy grandpa. Yeah. Because I think uh, I have the, the good comedy humor for that. So that's going to be my thing. You, you nervous for that day? No. When, no, no, when no. boys start coming over, you're not. You're not. No, man. No. Um, L- Jude and I talk a lot about that, um, just because that is that is life, right? Yeah. At some point, but I never would I be what I thought I would be. Um, I thought that I was going to be a stern. That bad boy. Se- yeah. The scene from Bad yeah, Boys. Like, yeah. It's like you, you look dirty, right? No. <laughs> um, I will be very direct with with whoever. Yeah. Right? And tell them say, hey, this is she's everything to me. You know, good luck. <laughs> Aside from that, I want her to have all the adventures in the world. Yeah. You know? Yeah, makes sense. Um, so uh, let, let's talk a little bit, not to pocket watch you, but let's talk about a little bit about your businesses mm-hmm. that you're involved in because 
people know a lot about optic hacks, but they don't know as you're pretty, you're not secretive or private, I guess, because you, you'll answer questions that people ask you. You just don't talk about Hector Rodriguez, CEO and business entrepreneur and all that too much. Mm -hmm. So outside of optic, you got Pine Park. Mm -hmm. uh, you're involved in, what else are you involved in? Guggen, good, good. Yeah. Um, just like regular investments. Yeah, and just other investments. And those other investments, you Real just kind of, you just, you've got a guy that, advises you I got, a, I got a girl her name is jude oh yeah. oh yeah, wow i didn't know that well she's she's um she's a better uh career woman than i am mm -hmm. i uh she's like a like a, a more diligent smarter uh you know like paper reader <laughs> <laughs> that's not my thing yeah, I, yeah yeah i i that is like i think that's what the the thing i struggled with the most which is probably why you don't see me talking about it or, or, or bragging about it. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's not even, it's not even bragging or, or, or that. It's just that I, I'm so braggadocious already about, you know, what I do Yeah. from sniping to just yeah, sniping. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> that, uh, that I keep the real shit like, you know, like separate from that. Cause then yeah. I, cause that, that, that is not who I would want to be. Like if I, if I was like overly, confident when it came to like businesses and that, that sort of stuff that, that doesn't fit with my with, yeah. with, with my soul as my character yeah. in this thing so you're like ma obviously massively confident when it comes to everything <laughs> when it comes to content when it comes to esports and when it comes to youtube and everything that we've been doing for 10 plus years yeah. uh but when when you get in when you first when when this thing took a turn and started really getting like businessy and you know, there's investments coming in and all these you know firms and stuff were you ever like, uh, were you ever intimidated at all being in rooms with like business people? No, I couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't because I was not there for myself. I was there for you guys. Yeah, you know what I mean, like I'm like I, ha I have to, this is the game that I have to play. Yeah, I'm not gonna get on stage and shit the bed and not try my best. If I lose up there, like all these we guys, all lose. Yeah. yeah, well, no, not like that. But I don't. I, I it wasn't about that for me. It was like, all right, I'm here representing you know the the brand. Uh, which obviously is, you know, everything uh, to me. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't, I just, uh, something switched in my brain that allowed me to clearly speak the things that I wanted to speak without saying the word fuck. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, so I'm yeah, like, yeah. oh shit, hell yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, not nah, nervous, not really, man. Most of the time, obviously, because of uh, the hard work that we put in and, and how innovative we've been up until a certain point. I mean, I yeah. think, I think uh, we need to catch that groove again, but... Up until that point, like everybody was coming after us, and there's a lot of that too still, which, which is f great for business, but also like it's it does nothing for the hunger of a creator who is trying to compete against other creators, and that's when you're the best at it. Yeah. So you said it is a you said it is a game, or you felt like it was a game that you had to play. Mm -hmm. Do you like that game, mm. or do you which one, which game do you like more? The actual content, the actual YouTube yeah. esports, or do you like that that business game? Uh, uh, the, the business game thing, um, not really. Yeah. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because of the the amount of explanations you have, the, you know, the the amount of education that you have to do with it. Yeah. Where where in content, with you're you're along other creators, and you say, "Yo, we should do this because of this," and it'll look like this. Immediately, the other person is gonna see it the same way. Yep. Maybe not exactly, but you know, the image is gonna be ultimately what 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 you do when you're trying to explain to people why we're doing it that way they're thinking it's like well how is that one thing going to make money or why are we doing that instead of that and then and, and you know the 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 explanation of of uh certain things that we do for free or certain things that don't have anything to do with money yeah is foreign to them because it's as a business everybody needs to you know yeah do, do uh what's best for that so and I guess to relate it to Call of Duty, I mean, uh, it's say you and your your business, your your business game and and scum, let's parallel it to Scump's uh, Call of Duty game. So do you, do you have uh, you consider yourself the best on the team? Do you have teammates in that? Like, do you have of teammates course. in 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 the business? And and have you ever had bad teammates? Have you had more bad teammates or good teammates in the last six years? More good teammates. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. The good teammates um, don't make the news, though. Unfortunately, unfortunately, yeah. no. Only the only, the thing is, is that no matter how many people you have around you, you're still on your own, right? Because mm -hmm. you have to be sort of this this 
fucking figure that has to be the the guy with the sword that has to defend what the spirit of this fucking logo is, yeah. no matter the cost, because the return may not be instant. It will gradually build up to something way more than what anybody expected it to be. Um, and that is like the, the biggest struggle is to get people to trust me yeah. to, to allow me to let this thing run free as it should. And by it, I mean the optic logo. Like how we run things here. Yeah. 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 And, and what they're talking to, uh, all these people are talking to multiple CEOs and owners in esports. You're, do you, how, how different, do you think there's other esports owners and, and, and CEOs that have somewhat of a similarity to how you, they talk to you? Because it seems like you, you and, and Nade mm -hmm. would probably be the anomalies in comparison to everyone else. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, uh, it, it'd be hard for him not to think the way that I think, and it'd be hard for me not to think the way that he would think in a situation because we, you know, everybody in that house has the same capability, right? Yeah. Um, because they saw it first class, first person, first, you know, front row. Yeah. Uh, other people sort of try to mimic and, and imitate that. Um, another another people that, that did it good uh, is obviously Face Clan. Obviously, like, clearly they, they, they blew up uh, um, beyond belief. Um, and, you know, aside from, from, from them, they had to bring in a business person because none of them wanted to do that. And I completely understand that, right? Because it's not, yeah. it's not for me. So I can I can see how it wouldn't be for somebody way younger than me that did have to do that that corporate stint of ten years of uh, of real life living in the matrix. Yeah, and and so when you, you you do it, you go down that path for the first time when we when we you know go on the infinite uh, mm -hmm. venture. Uh, you actually do have you know people I guess quote unquote above you. That's how they see it. Mm -hmm. You got people that uh, that you thought were gonna. Take take the hand off and run with it, mm -hmm. and instead they sort of run backwards. Mm -hmm. It seems. Um, what's been the difference between all these? Uh, you know, there, through those those three or four years, it was pretty rocky. Uh, what's been the differences between all the different like parent companies or or people people that we've merged with or you know boards? But uh, the, I mean, good intentions comes uh, with every single one of those instances. Even the infinite ones, like they all had good intentions. They just didn't run parallel to where this thing needed to be in order to go. And I think it's uniform across all esports. And this, I think this is the third podcast where I'm going to say this, is that esports as you see it, there's nothing wrong with it, right? Um, the viewership's there. The competitors are there. The interest is there. The, the, the sponsors want to be there. It is just that, unfortunately, the people that invested money were told that this was going to be, you know, be way faster than traditional sports and getting to a billion dollar valuation, right? The unicorn of sorts. And what's happening is that while esports is and was growing up in those early days, people came in with steroids right away, right? Yeah. And this thing was prepubescent, if you may, right? You, you gotta let a, a, a kid mature into something before you start feeding it all of the, all of the extra. You, you yeah. gotta let that, that, that develop. Uh, and I think esports was the same way. Like we had a fucking, we still do, right? But we had an excellent trajectory. There was something happening, and they should have just let the kids do the kid things, yeah. right? That's what I was really good at. Whatever it was that people wanted to see, like I let the kids do it because I know that that's what I would want to see as a fan. Yeah, I mean, we're, we were kind of arrogant about it. Uh, I mean, I still kind of am, if I'm being honest. But like, if it comes to us and Phase. Like back in those days, before anyone got help, no one was close. Mm -mm. There was no one close, and 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 Phase was crushing it in the content aspect of things, not necessarily the esports. You know, not not necessarily both. Yeah. And especially in in, in controller esports, like I don't think there was any. I mean, obviously there was a bunch of viewership uh, yeah. out, elsewhere, and we found that out once we entered Counter Strike, and yeah. we started getting you know crazy viewership there. Um, but what whenever. Whenever you realize that all this other extra help is coming into esports, was it? Were you like? Were you like? Damn, I I won, and now I got to play again. Like, did you feel like you would had won a battle, and now everyone's getting help, and now you got to get help? Yeah, that's how it felt, right? Because because I knew that Scump and Nature were gonna get big offers, and I, as their older brother, quote unquote, yeah, I had to make them take that deal. If I couldn't give it to them, then. And I, there wasn't a way for me to predict what the future was going to be like because I don't know fucking uh, 
when or why I would accept any money from anyone when we're living our dream and paying the bills and everyone's fucking happy. Yeah. But, you know, money and rightfully so, players need to get paid. And I was like, okay, well, then I need to start getting some uh, some help to to start, like, strengthening this thing. But, I mean, think about it, man. Like, before the money came in, we had we had one championship after championship after yep. championship in different ones. Um, Counter-Strike was, like, the, the one that I feel like we could – we had so much runway that, uh, unfortunately, the – what happened at, at um at you know with uh, it, it's just unfortunate timing yeah. you know again nothing's wrong with esports it's just that the people that invested money were told like yo by year four you're gonna have a return and not only is that not happening in some in some instances but Dude, year four yeah that's ins- it was year, people were saying year four uh, from yeah I when, mean you know it's blurry yeah, now yeah, yeah, right yeah. but but yeah that's what they expect and again esports is, has a good trajectory. But it's got a lot of weight on it right now, right? Its backpack, its backpack is full. Where before the backpack was empty and full of ideas, now it's like, yo, I gotta, I gotta make a monthly payment to something, right? Yeah. Um, and it doesn't allow for esports to grow as it should. Uh, so we're like, you know, we 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 suffer from that too, right? Like we we took that and then we have to start over. Uh, we had a <laughs> like a. We, we we won and then we had like I think three years of of, of little bumpiness, right? For for the logo. Um, and then, yeah. you know, some flat surface. Yeah. I mean, we've, I think we're doing good now. I mean, we still, we're, we're still I'm very daily, happy. daily improving, but, yeah. but I mean, I think, I think every once in a while we all tend to forget what the hell just happened over the past four years. Like, I do. I, I, you forget? Goodbye. I don't even, you know? Yeah. The only time I talk about it is when we were doing podcasts, not you and me, but like just people, people in general. Yeah. Um, because that's something that happened to us that we were so close to that it's impossible not to talk about that. Right. Right. It's like uh, we went through school or, or college together. Yeah. And whatever happened in that college happened in that college. Yeah. And it's something that you want to talk about. Whether whether it was dark or not, whether it's a happy ending, bad ending, like who knows? But it still gets talked about. Yeah. But man, I don't I don't look at those days and I'm just like, oh fuck, I wish I could do those. Yeah. Over. Yeah. So right now, uh, in current optic, I don't know. In, in Optic Gaming right now, mm-hmm. the overall company, uh, you are the CEO. Yes. And in, in and obviously owner. In past, in the past, especially I'm thinking in Infinite, mm-hmm. uh, you were the owner, but you weren't the CEO. Okay. Yep. Which which one? I mean, and and you've you've experienced that in the past as well in other you know yeah. in other ventures. Do you like being sole CEO? Do you uh, like? You wish you I had fight, somebody. I, f- I fight for it. I fight internally. I have a fight. Yeah. Um. One, I don't, you know, when I'm comfortable to sort of be like, yo, you know, somebody, like, I'm getting more and more comfortable because I have people like you who are, you know, in those meetings. I have people like fucking Maddie who's been with me for four years. We have, you know, Roger who understands it because he's been looking it through the glass the whole time and all, all these all these uh, people. And obviously with the with the manage, management team on the business side that we have now, it, you know, there's there's a balance there. Yeah. But, you know, there's always going to be that 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 struggle. But like, I'm I'm a good bridge, right? I was able to do both very good where I know what it's like to be a content creator. Mm -hmm. And I also know what's needed to make, you know, a business. Um, And while, you know, both sides are good in in this case scenario, there, there hasn't been a second bridge or another person that has been able to, to do that. And I'm okay with that. Like, I don't want to go anywhere. Don't don't get me wrong. Uh, But you know, when, when we did this merger there, you know, there was supposed to be a CEO and I was supposed to be just, you know, sort of doing content and having fun and, you know, yep. what, I, what, I, what I earned. Right? Like a repeat of, yeah. yeah. Well, well, no, I don't think it would have been a, a repeat. Not a, re- not yeah. a repeat, but that mentality. Yeah, yeah, the, that mentality, like yeah. what you went into with, yeah. with Infinite. And, and so we, we do, the Infinite thing happens. We all move down here. We have the offices. We have all these different companies and the and uh, ventures that are that are going on. And you, you know, having worked for 10 years, you take a little bit of a break. I'm sure we've talked about this. Mm-hmm. Take a little bit of a, of a break. You go fishing. You're like, you're like, when I get back, I'm going to spend time with my family. Mm-hmm. When I get back, I'm going to do uh, content. Mm-hmm. And then you walk back into basically a burning building. Yeah. So when we do this merger with Envy and you have that, you basically have that decision again. Like, am I about to, you know, I got, we've got Optic back. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've done all this work. Huntsman and then Optic Chicago, we did it ourselves. Yeah. Now we merged with somebody. Yeah. Was that ever a thought with you? It's like, all right, now I can chill. Or you're like, I can't do that again. Everybody that I've met on this side has been, you know, overly qualified. So. Yeah. That's how, that's that's why I asked I asked Rod the same thing whenever we did our uh, our test episode. I was like, what's been the difference? Like, what do you think has been the difference between this merger and what happened at, at Infinite? And he's yeah. like, oh, it's 
people here, it seems like people here understand. And if they don't understand, they're willing to understand. Yeah. I think the willingness to understand when it came to infinite uh, entertainment, infinite entertainment, right? I forgot. It's been so damn long. Yep. <laughs> it seemed like some of them didn't have the willingness to to. I don't know if, I don't know if, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I still try to like think about like what motives and all that stuff. And I just, you know, m- miscommunication has to be like that at the top of like for my sure. list. Uh, because like I said, everybody has good intentions for the most part. Yeah. For, yeah, for the most part. Do you remember, um, whenever I get fired, I get fired basically from, uh, being the, the, I guess, head of media or whatever mm-hmm. I was called, basically the guy that was doing vision and all, and organizing all the other stuff. Uh, and then I, I go to be a content creator and I make this around the bar. And at the time, mm. at the time, this is the only time we've ever gotten to like a, a little yeah. bit of an argument. Um, it was the way I, you word things. It was the way I worded things. Yeah. But so, so I'm making around the bar basically saying like, you know, I've, I've been told that I'm going to now be a content creator and I'm not no longer going to be, a, a, you know, doing anything on the media side. They're taking my camera and all that. I was super hurt, you know. Mm-hmm. And I make that video, and and at the time, I don't think it was widely known that you weren't the head CEO, like you weren't the CEO at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so you make this black and white video. Do you still have it? You on make the, this on the channel. Yeah. You make this. Bi- well, the thing is, is you make this black and white video. Basically, like you're like, hey, just so you know, I don't know where we stand, and I'm releasing this tomorrow. And I watched it in a Target parking lot, and I'm like, damn, you were going in. And then. I was like, Bad Girls Live tomorrow? He said, yeah. And I was like, I will try my best to, I, I just didn't want to step on your toes because I didn't want to be like, yo, by the way, Hex isn't CEO, so like I'm dealing with other people. I didn't want to do yeah, all yeah, that, yeah. you know? Uh, but, but it still got out, though. The, yeah. You, it, look, look, look at us now. Look at us. Hey, look <laughs> at us. us now. Yeah, look at us. But the thing is, is what I, res- uh, what, what I respect is you had me nervous. I went to bed. I went to bed that night. I was like, damn, he's about, like, I'm about to get blasted tomorrow. Like, I feel so bad. And then you released the video. It was a completely different video. Mm-hmm. You gotta, you're got you a little softy, man. I am. <laughs> I've always been like this. I've always been a big brother. Therefore, I cannot yeah. punch. I can't punch my little brothers too hard. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I I don't even remember what I said on the first one or the second one, to be fucking honest. I, I, I can't remember either. Uh, but, but yeah, I, I, I released a, a, the, the more, you know, from the heart. From the heart. Yeah. We're working things out internally, in but I'm I'm upset. But other people are upset $100, too. Thousand dollars on my neck. Like, That's disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> um, you think you're uh, you think any any bridges that have been burned uh, between you know your uh, our side of things and and people that you know have have been seen as I guess opposition or mm-hmm. didn't understand? Do you think those will ever mend? If, if this is a specific question about Jay. Because he's the only person that I don't talk to still. Uh, okay. Because I talked to Chris Cheney. I've talked to like some people. Uh, some people there like rubbed me the wrong way, like really, really, really badly. And it, whatever, like they they didn't owe me anything. I I don't owe them anything. Um, yeah. But with Jay, it's like it's different, right? Because he was he was my boyfriend all the time. Yeah. I don't know. I look at us now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what, what is there not to be happy <laughs> look about? At us you know now. what I'm saying? Uh, so yeah, I don't. I, I don't. I don't have hate for anyone. I know you don't. But you, like I you said, I have hate for things. Of course, not we all do. Not for anyone. Uh, but like you said, you you've always been like kind of a that big brother vibe. If somebody's somebody's fucking up, you want to figure out how to help them not fuck up instead of just being like, "Damn, they gotta yeah. go." And yeah. a lot of people have said, you know, they gotta go. So I didn't know if that's something you'd ever thought about. It was like, because like you said, it's the only person. Yeah. I, well, I had a I had a few people in mind, but Jay obviously being the biggest one. I yeah. I think eventually in my life I, I gotta I don't know. Every once in a while it, that that still doesn't sit right with me. But yeah, it's been I, a, it's been a long time uh, now. Again, you know, uh, I'm I'm sure he has a great life. I have a great life. Yep, there's money too. I get know. that. All right, man, we going into Counter Strike or what? <sighs> Matt, you want to go into Counter Strike? Absolutely. Yeah, you, I'm down. You know, we got to do it now. Matt wants to go. Yeah, Matt wants to get in. If the right opportunity presents itself, <laughs> Optic will do what Optic's got to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, everyone's going, everyone's, you know, you still see, even, you still see two sides of the coin right now. There's, there's esports orgs that are getting out of every esport. And then you've got people that are still buying other esports orgs, still, still pushing, mm-hmm. you know, 
farther it seems like yeah. into into that world who do you think who which is the smarter decision right now if you're a, if you're able to look, i don't want this is not financial this advice not by fi- any means. Yeah, okay okay um I am a little bit intoxicated, so take what I say with a grain of tahin, uh, <laughs> because uh, this is not me. Uh, we, I, yeah, we, the people around me, we feel very bullish about esports. Though the viewership is there, the green wall is as strong as it's ever been. Still rebuilding, you know, but yeah, we're, we're, we're as big as it's ever uh, as, as it could have ever been. Um, so for us, it's a, the, the thing, the th- this is the thing though, right? Like for us, it's a way of life. For us, it's something that we get to do mm-hmm. without getting super cheesy about it because that's so not optic, right? Um, we, we just, this is a lifestyle for us. So whether esports is doing good or not, the content needs to be created for the people that are here, period. What's happening out there and who's fucking failing where, or with, none of our business. Okay. You know, our business is to sit here sit in front of the camera have conversations because we've been lucky enough to have some historical moments that have kept people intrigued and along for the ride and i thank you for that yeah and uh yeah like i i i think our i think we're getting to a point where we're a little bit more serious about what we expect going forward and like i i I think i've mentioned this in every fucking around the bar it seems like but mr b said the the best part the what that what can't change is his product and his product is the best videos possible mm-hmm. and then everything else he can do around that yeah you can go as as hard as you want as long as the best videos as yeah. you're still making the best videos possible because yeah. that is the bread and butter and our bread and butter is us being in person hanging out doing our thing and then when we break away we venture out and we do different things and then we come back together and we still make those you're just videos. saying that because you're about to leave for a fucking month <laughs> nah nah nah, nah. <laughs> hey but i'm yeah, coming well, back you're smooth smooth, I'm smooth. Back. Oh, shit. I'm- allow me to interrupt the podcast for just a split second to talk about center and while i'm talking you guys get to watch austin cox make some wonderful drinks behind the bar that includes center sparkling cbd there's a bunch of different products that Center offers. We got the sparkling water in the, the regular in the black can or the sugar-free in the white can. We've got the instant powders as well, three different flavors of those. Relax, recover, and also balance. Go to findyourcenter.com and also follow them on Instagram at findyourcenter. Around the Bar is presented by Center. Center offers all natural hemp-derived CBD beverages with premium ingredients to help you find clarity and focus in your everyday life. At your bar, Center can be a great addition to your mixed drinks. Center can also offer a tasty alcohol alternative. A favorite mix of mine is the unsweetened CBD sparkling drink with the pomegranate flavored relaxed CBD powder. Definitely go check that out. Take a sip, take a moment and find your Center. Use the code OPTIC25 for 25% off of your first order today. Thank you guys so much for listening to me ramble and for watching Austin mix up that wonderful CBD track. All right, guys, back to the pod. Uh, but um, so when it comes to esports in in the future, is that is that a that's the thing we're 100%. we're locking down? Is Absolutely. is Dallas? You got to be in Dallas. Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, look, obviously we have the Bolta sisters who create incredible fucking content, right. and uh, the Apex team. Like, that, I'd like for I, I would at least like for the for the you know esports players to be here the yeah. reason why that's important is because that's what we did best we were the perfect hybrid yeah of competition and content that's why we were different right like you were saying earlier face like boom you know blew up on the content side and obviously now they've had you know obviously you know esports success and then you have um you had other teams that had just competition right so right. we were like Hey, our content is the competition and anything ancillary to that competition. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I'll always say that, that our secret was the fact that we opened up our, our doors to everything through these cameras. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's how I feel. I mean, I think that, that, that crazy run we had in, I think, 2017 where we won a, we won a Gears event, then we won a Halo event, then we won a COD event, then we won a CS event. It was like back to back to back to back. And, so we did it, and like man. Vision Vision was just like, 
Vision banger, One Week was about banger, it was like bam, pow, 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 pow. Yeah. It's like, dude, that's that's something that like I'm sure other orgs have done that. There's probably been the liquids, TSMs, the 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 cloud nines of the world that have won multiple tournaments in the same month in different esports. Maybe historians, let's call Thorin. That's the that's the thing, is I it's called Thorin. But it takes somebody like Thorin to know about that. Yeah. You gotta be tapped uh, into every Thorin, esport. Thorin will more than likely just be like the only esports are fucking Counter Strike and fucking League of Legends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he called me a hack filmmaker. So yeah, and then I think, uh, hey, listen, let's get Thorin on the pod. Let's get Thorin here. I think we're still uh, <laughs> Thorin. If you're listening, I'll fly you in for the show. <laughs> I got I got to duke it out with Thorin and Leffen, but I think they both have me blocked. No, no, Leffen unblocked me, so now it's just Thorin. Mm. Yeah, might have to, might have to, to. I can to, make a phone call to duke that out. Um, so, uh, content wise, uh, you've you've done a bunch of ventures. You've done a bunch of series on on content, uh, dating all the way back to Sniper's top Nest five. Yes, yeah, Sniper's Nest. Uh, so you got uh, all the way Sniper's Nest, all the way to Idiots. Mm-hmm. Uh, how how has how have those ventures been? I'm, I'm gonna throw a few at you, and you just tell me. Tell me how it started and tell me how you think it's going and and how much pa- what's your passion level for those things. Let's go with idiots first because I know that's on the top of your, your list right now. I missed graffiti. I missed painting it. It's yeah. been 20 years. I never became who I wanted to become in the world of graffiti. And the ego that, that I've developed doing what yeah. I do now is, is, is if you did it here, you could do it there. But it's, it's so much different, um, especially when – okay, yeah. So idiots, I wanted to reconnect with graffiti in a way. Um, Obviously, one of my best friends uh, works here, who also, you know, who designs our, our merch and also is a world-renowned graffiti writer in Omens, uh, yeah. who also loves to fucking eat. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, you know, uh, I always want to have a cooking show, a food show. El Chefe was a thing, obviously. And we we were talking about releasing a green egg, uh, an optic green egg, Smokey Joe uh, combo, you know, like you... Okay. you you grab the the spatula and then you press on the burger and instead of the state of Texas, the optic logo and then your burgers are fucking fire. Yeah. And we were going to do that. And the way that it started is, hey, we're going to go to shoot all the assets and all the stuff for this thing so that we can have like a, a – like so we can have everybody hype about buying this Smokey yeah. Joe and grilling burgers with the optic logo on them, et cetera. Uh, we were talking back and forth and, and originally it was just supposed to be a promotion for that thing, uh, a, a promotion for um, – for that Products. summer drop, yeah, yeah, okay. Same time that we dropped the that, that we dropped uh, Wallace Floaty and yeah, like all that cool fun. shit. Um, that's when we that's what it was supposed to be for. But then okay. Mike is like, "Yo, why don't we just like um, you know do this thing to promote this thing?" And I was like, "Well, what if we take it a step further and then just like do content for this initiative that we have with uh, the Optic Nation?" Yeah, and uh, we didn't have a name at all. I'm trying to think what first names we came up with. Idiots goes crazy. Idiots goes fucking hard. <laughs> Shout out my boy crazy. Gio. Uh, he's the one that came up with it. Uh, when when Mike was still in, in, in Chicago, they were sitting around. I don't know what the fuck they were doing. Um, probably hating on someone, you know, talking shit. Yeah, that's um, what you guys you guys bond over that. <laughs> you guys. I was, I was saying they do. Uh, <laughs> habitual hate steppers, you know what I'm saying? Um, but, uh, you know, it's like idiots. is like idiot. Like the, the, the word idiot. Yep. I D I O T. Oh, idiot. Okay. Yeah, idiot. The, the main one. The main. Yeah. The, the, the principal. Okay. One. That gets used a lot in the villains thread. You know. That's, that's, okay. That's a joke. And, and villains is what's villains? The villains is like a For people like, that don't just know? a group of friends. Okay. Uh, also, a, a somewhat of a graffiti crew. Okay. Uh, that Mike uh, uh, and I represent uh, uh, amongst others, but they were having something, and then he just said idiots, and he's like, he sent me a text, idiots, and I was just like. That's it. Genius. It's not. It's not just it. It's it. Yeah. It's, it's idiot. it. <laughs> um, so yeah. So it was a. Uh, it was a passion project. Um, always wanted to do something like that. Travel. Um, traveling and trying new things. F- food. Yeah. Specifically, are one of the best surprises that you can ever get. You just like as a video game player. Uh, you like to find these like rare rarities, right? Like an elevated form of something that is presented to you in a different way. Right? You've yep. had a hot dog for sure, yeah. but have you had a a nasty style hot dog mm. where instead of uh, relish, they give you a a pepper? Uh, I'm sorry, a a, a, a uh, what else say pepper? Uh, what the fuck, pepino? Uh, Banana pepper? No, man, a fucking cucumber. 
I would my, never yeah, have, a cucumber. I was thinking poblano. I was no, thinking pepino. Right. So they do. So they give you a slice of that. It's got it's got a little bit of like season like the Chicago hot dog reinvented. I was so surprised to find that. I've never had a I love hot dogs. That's like yeah. my number one thing. I like it better than pizza, I like it better than fucking hamburgers. Don't give me a choice because you're gonna be mad. Right? But he it was it was unexpected. It was a surprise. It was yeah. a, an unassuming uh just hot dog stand. And instead of giving you like jardinera peppers or sports peppers, this dude gave you a grilled serrano pepper. And that like was like so me, right? So I just yeah. bit into that. I was like, a lot of flavors. Anyways, yeah. So any like any fun experiences like that is like discovering a new world in a yeah. in a video game. What's the what's the long term goal for idiots? Uh, just keep it not going? dying. <laughs> not dying of ingestion or a fucking heart attack too too early. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. We'll see. I yeah. just like I, I do especially since since I started doing like whatnot um uh, sen- let me rephrase that since I found that whatnot was the most efficient way for me to sell my art mm-hmm. um that's what it did you know that, that's what I started doing so getting out there and, and getting my creative juices flowing uh to allow me to bring something new to decorate people's game rooms and shit like that yeah. uh makes me like I don't know it makes me want to get out there but I've been I've been feeling like my brain betrays me a lot inadvertently because I like so many things. Same. Right? Yeah. Like, what are the things that you like? I mean, look at the people I've, I've interviewed. I've interviewed Roger and Paige, just uh-huh. Tweedledee, Tweedledum, you know. Yeah. Uh, I disagree. You like that one? You like Matt, that one, Matt? Matt, Matt loves that one. Yo, my man AC, what's up with a, with a refill, kid? <laughs> what's up with a re- Uh We got Mike P, he's a battle rapper. Yep. We got Mango, he's a professional me- melee player. Yep. And we've got Mystic, who is uh, obsessed with YouTube, and he's a Pokemon Go player. So mm-hmm. it's like, and I, I'm i sure in the future, it's been the first season's been kind of rushed. In the future, I'm going to have to deep dive and, and do a bunch of things. Matt and I are going to watch read books and, and, and encyclopedias about different things. Speaking of idiots, this is the editor and camera guy behind Idiots. Yeah. So this is Austin, Austin Cox. He's, the, he's been traveling with us uh, every single day of this thing. Uh, and yep. he's, he's, uh, he's, we always save him a little bit. Yeah, do yeah. you? Oh, of course. You don't make him have like McDonald's and went no, home. Oh, hell no! No, he eats. He eats. Why? That's why I couldn't believe <laughs> that nobody wanted to be my my you know to go along this journey. I said, Matt, you want to go? He's like, nah. And then I was like, Roger, you're going. He's like, nah. You regret it, Matt? And I'm. I don't regret. I'm happy, man. <laughs> so, like, I'm, I'm glad Austin is is doing it. Yeah. Now that you know, now that we're dialed in, I think that we're we're really good. That's and that's, that's season weird. one was a little bit of a. Uh, of, of learning experience for for all of us, uh, you know, he and I had never worked together. Yeah, yeah. And as you know, I'm the easiest person to fucking work <laughs> with, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I I right, will Matt? say I will I say that yeah, in, I, I, I say that in jest, <laughs> I say that in jest, but I can't fucking help it. This is, don't you cannot work at Optic. Bro, let, I, let, me, let, me, let me public it, yeah, service yeah. announcement. You cannot work at Optic if you are not ready to do it the best you can possibly do yeah. because I am going to call you out. I yeah. don't care how how precious your feelings are. Yep. This is something bigger, bigger than me, bigger than fucking everyone. So if yeah. you're not here representing for the brand the way that you're so fucking supposed to, this place is not for you. It's going to be a toxic work environment. <laughs> it's going to it's, it's it's going to piss you off. It's going to make you sad. Yeah. But the product needs to. We are accountable to something bigger. I think I'm starting to tap into that a little bit because when I when I joined Optic, it was like my you know my life dream or whatever to join Optic, a join, and you know I I get along really well. I mean, I've had managers and, and things and people like authority my whole life. So what you're, you're like little roasts and stuff. They never really bothered me every once in a while. I was like, shit, I'm fucking up and I would change it. But like, I was like, I'm, I'm never going to be like that. That's just not how I am. Like me. Yeah. But as I've gotten more and more, you know, into like trying to do my own things. A position like, of leadership. Yeah. I'm like, damn, like I can't, I can't afford to like. Like there's, there's, I've already like the past couple of weeks, I've been like, yo, what is, what, what's happening here? Yeah. And then I'm like, damn, I'm fucking turning into hex, dude. Uh, but I guess you kind of have to, when, when is your money, when is your money and your, uh, your, no, your no. brand on the line? No, it's not even that. It's, 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 you have a responsibility for the people underneath you. If, yeah. if somebody fucks up, it's not just his paycheck that's getting fucked up. It's everybody else's paycheck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
that's why I tell Bose and I tell fucking uh, or back in the day I used to tell Bose and I used to tell fucking Flame Sword. I go, yo, if you fuck up, you have to go. Cause yeah. don't make me kick you because I will, but you have to be a, a a man and fucking leave on your own. If you know that you fucked up to where you're jeopardizing what we're building here, you gotta fucking go. There's no room for that. It, it, not only do you suffer and your future suffers, but then like we don't need to bring that drama to the people that are watching us. They're, they're, they're looking at us to fucking escape something or to be distracted by something or to yeah. just plainly just chill and, and be entertained by it. So, you know, it's 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 the position of leadership that you're that you're experiencing. Not necessarily that you as a person is changing. It's just that you're switching that switch that says, hey, I have a fucking responsibility. Yeah. Maybe in order in order for me to get that switch to flip, I had to put m- a monetary number behind it. Because, like, this bar spent a lot of money on this thank bar. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Well, what's uh, season three? Where are we going? Mexico City. Mexico there City. Now you heard it here first. Let's go. How, how, how uh, big of a break do we have? Until the next one comes out? Yeah. Until season two comes out, or until y'all go to season three? Uh, well, he's got to edit season two before we can leave. Yeah, mm. I mean, we'll probably quit season, quit, uh, go to season three right when season two. Right, when season two comes out, go yeah. to season three? Well, yeah. no rush, man, but it's got to be done by the end of the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> As he's making As us he's drinks. Making us drinks. Uh, no, I, I, think, I think like investing a lot of money into, into this set, yeah, and and then also uh, I've got a few like YouTube videos that I'm working on that yeah. I've invested a decent amount of money into. Cheers, just like yeah, cheers, cheers. Uh, got a mm. that tahine, man. Ooh, Ooh, that one's good. Oh my god. Yeah, that one hits the spot. Um, do you not tell them like what what's in here for this it's around the bar? We're drinking. You don't tell them. Hey, there is tequila and hibiscus. Well, in this with a rim of tahini. So for around the bar, I always drink what my guest wants to drink. Mm-hmm. So I asked you what you want to drink. You said Bacardi Cola. Yeah. And I was like, all right, we'll have that. And then uh, and then Austin comes over. He's like, you want me to make a surprise drink for yeah. you? And you said, yes. So this is the first time that we both got surprised. Cool. I had no idea what we were going to drink. That's good. Um, but yeah, we've had, uh, we've had uh, Hennessy, Cranberry. We've had a 40. We've had a thing called Was it Old English? Thing. What was he drinking? For what? What was Mango drink? You say he, had, he was drinking 40s. Uh, it's uh, Miller High Life. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? Bam. Yeah, because do they have 40s in Texas? I haven't seen a... Now that I look around, I haven't seen a 40 in Texas, but they have those like big tall boys, like taller than tall oh, boys. Oh, yeah, I thought the Colt 45 or like an old, uh, old English. I'm, I'm, I'm not a... I, I was telling him that. I was like, this is the biggest beer I've ever had in my life. He's like, Damn. are you serious? So you drink, so you drink what we're drinking? Yeah. We have to go to, uh, to the Pine Park Studios... And then we have to do my my around the bar. The high highly productive? productive dude. I want to do. I've I've asked you. Don't you, play. You should games. go. You should go. You should go do uh, Pine Park after dark. What's um, the difference? Highly productive is your thing. Yeah, and Pine Park Pine Park after dark is just such a be, such a much better project. Yeah. The only difference about highly productive is where I interview people who are who who smoke on a daily basis and still. <sighs> Okay, are able to become a successful whatever it is that they do. There was a chef, you know, yeah, actors, yeah, yeah. etc. Uh, but the Pine Park After Dark is like fucking legit. They just kick it, dude. It's the it's un, until you watch is it. Is that the one Bose was on? Yeah, yeah. Bose was keeping up with them. Yeah, and people were like, "Damn, Bose is keeping up." <laughs> I don't think I don't think I could keep up with them if if like I couldn't go dab for dab with like <laughs> Ericon or or Tim or Goblin. But you know, joints and blunts, I could I could certainly stay the fuck yeah. uh, all the way up. Yeah, uh, I mean, I lived with Aaron for a year and a half, so yeah. my tolerance got pretty high at one point. But ever since then, I've, I, I, it was funny because like when people were offering it, I would always say yes, but I wouldn't go out and get it myself, mm. especially since it's not legal. Mm. So like you can't just go buy it. Yeah. But like when I'm in LA and I'm walking down the street and I pass a dispensary, I'm like, let's pop in there, get some, yeah. get some Pine Park. You, get, was, some, you, you get pre-rolls? What do you get? Uh, yeah, pre-rolls. Pre-rolls and like gummies. I, I like edibles, but yeah, but they're dangerous. But I also like. Well, them. they're not dangerous. They just. They're dangerous. Well, I, they're dangerous. <laughs> uh, don't don't take them unless you're supervised or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I guess not like actual danger, but there's been times where I'm like that. You should learn was... how to roll your own. <laughs> I should. I've heard it's very relaxing. It not, not only is it very relaxing, but don't you want to be like. Look at what I create. <laughs> 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 Let's burn it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that yeah. does sound fun. 
I got like a, uh, I'm thinking about getting like an espresso machine. Mm -hmm. And I got like a French press. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like, same thing. Like, you're making your own coffee. Like, it's not Starbucks, motherfucker. I made, I made that. We were talking about how many things you like, right? And you're like battle rap, fucking uh, smash, uh, who's uh, Pokemon. Pokemon. Yeah. yeah. Uh, And then Optic or whatever. Yeah. But my my brain betrays me, as I was saying, because for the last, um, for the last like three weeks, I've been rewatching uh, Initial D. Are you familiar? Mm-mm. It's a super old uh, anime, like nineties, ninety six, ninety seven um, <laughs> anime. It, it, it came. It was around the same time where like Akira, Ghost in the Shell, Ninja Scroll, like those cool uh, anime. Like Wu Tang shit. I don't know if it's Wu Tang shit, but definitely a lot of a lot of inspiration came from from yeah. those for Wu Tang, um, in some instances. Uh, but I've been rewatching this thing and. Yeah, there you go. Initial drift. It's about racing. Like, have oh, you ever known shit. me to be what? into racing? No, at all, right? Or anime? What for, for real? Uh, you're in. You're into anime? No, I'm into these cartoons. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Um, huh? But yeah, this is it's. Uh, That's all you have to do in order. If you don't like anime, all you have to do to like anime is call it cartoon. Not be sober. What do you mean? You gotta smoke a lot of weed and then you'll like it. No, I don't know. I, I mean, I watched this when I was in, in, and I never finished it because back in the day, like they came in cassettes. Okay. So there was no way, there was no Crunchyroll. Uh, yeah. So, you know, for you to go look for one, like it was like a fucking mission. Yeah. And I already had like my own missions to fucking complete, right? I had my, all these fucking side quests, that's what they're called now. <laughs> Did you like that one? <laughs> Which one? What? I like hearing Matt laugh. Just you got so many side quests. <laughs> I have a lot of fucking I side mean, you do, man. You're trying to complete 100 percent this shit. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. But um, it's, it's not. It's it's a. Uh, I can't. I can't help it. Mm. I cannot help it. I got. I have to be doing something that I like at all times. Yeah. Or working towards something. So where I was going with that is that I have two things in my brain right now that I have an itch to scratch. Okay. And. Gonorrhea. My, my my brain Sorry. my brain is is betraying me again on this on this uh on this racing thing because I went I went to go buy that car. You went to buy it? I went to buy it. I got online and I'm I'm like where where do I need to buy it from? Okay. It's got to be shipped from Japan. But am I am I inadvertently throwing myself into another hobby that is rebuilding fucking cars? Like I'm not a mechanic, but I like the way that mechanics work you in like a the, sense. You like the towel over the shoulder and the fucking, where's the carburetor? Fucking cigarette and yeah. shit. It's like, <laughs> oh, the, his transmission the is... The flux ca- ca- capacitor uh, <laughs> needs, a, needs a little tuning. I you get know? it, I get it. Um, that and camping. Like, I've always camped my entire life. Yeah. But I haven't been camping because with money comes luxury. Mm-hmm. So glamping becomes a thing. Get a fucking, you know, 24 right. room mansion on the that water. House on wheels. Yeah. yeah. What, uh, I don't know about a house on wheels. Oh, I, th- I thought you were talking about like a, one of those big ass RVs. No, 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 to no, camp no, no. In. no I, that's not my, I don't think that's my thing. My thing would be like a, like my Bronco and like the thing. Remember how I showed, I sent you, I was sending, sending you videos uh, yesterday? Yeah. yeah. Like that is like the other itch that I need to scratch. Like being able to. Survive some, out, some outdoorsy shit. Yeah, some outdoorsy shit. Okay. Um, but yeah, I just I, I I don't you know Jude Jude has you know reads a fucking bunch right so she's like almost a psychologist. She's not she's not uh, a professor of any sort, <laughs> but she has a lot of knowledge in here that okay. you know that makes a lot of sense to me when she's talking right and um, anyway, long story short, I said I can't help it but to be so interested in things. That I just have to fucking do them, or yeah. otherwise, like I am uneasy as fuck. Yep. So that's it's where the side quests come from. That's why I have ten thousand trading cards sitting on the floor of your office right now. Because when I do something, and then I work with some, and then I work with Atlas, or I work with Matt, or I work with TST, and I'm like, well, we should do this. Mm-hmm. It always gets done. It always. I always like wait. Well, if we're gonna do this, we should do this, and then we should do this, and then lo and behold, I have a. A yeah, whole no, entire bar. Well, this took a long ass time. It did take a long time. On this table, <laughs> there has been mini walls. Yeah. There has been prints. Mm-hmm. There has been uh, canvases. I used the shit out of this. Um, I didn't use any of this. I like not even for storage. Yeah. Uh, all this, all, all this was in, in in the garage mahal. But I put a lot of like uh, a lot of use to these things. Yeah. My name's in here somewhere. I wrote it. Is That's it? a secret. Good I'll luck. find it. I'll find it one day. Uh, I am. I am going to call you out when, when I jo- when I joined Optics. So I, I come down. I come down. Uh, stay at the sixty fifty house for four days before we go to Nola. And in you're I, not getting a white chain. It doesn't doesn't count. 
Anyway, where were we I think going? I, I think I should get away. What do you guys think? Where were you going? Okay. Anyway, uh, so I, I get in the car with you, and you, you tell we're, we're driving. It's the first time we've like really talked, um, you know, not about just Call of Duty. We're talking about a bunch of different shit. And uh, you, you tell me, um, you know, uh, we got this thing coming. We're working with a company. And I was like, what company? And you're like, it's the first time we're working outside of endemic sponsors. Um, we're, we're working with Brisk or, you know, Pepsi. And I was like, Damn. It's like that's fucking sick, and then you say, "Only like three more years before I get my Ferrari." Mm-hmm. Well, like one, you said Ferrari at the time. It, it, it might has it might have changed to Lambo. Well, so, since I was a kid, the L- Lamborghini. Lamborghini Diablo has always been, but they haven't updated it. I'm not into like old school cars. Anyway, why haven't I? What's why haven't you? We we talk shit about Seth all the time, mm-hmm. but you've said. That's what it's. That's, I'm going there. I'm getting that. I, I do. I do. Is reg- it because you can't afford it? Yeah, I do regret. <laughs> I do regret. Uh, I do regret not not have not having had a Lamborghini when Schofield was alive. My my dog, mm-hmm. because it was always the plan was always like it's just gonna be like me and Schofield. Yeah, two seater. Me and Schofield. I would tough, joke with yeah. Jude and you know all this and uh, and yeah, I do. I do. I do. So 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 regret it. So now it's now you can't. Is that how you feel, or you still can? You still- I told you that I, I'm like I can't do it. And yeah. She's like you still have to do it, and I'm like I can't do it. The other thing is, is I don't know. I'm I'm very 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 satisfied with with like my life right now. So for me, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not obvious. You know, there's, there's there's everybody struggles. I I got my my, my own shit that I got to deal with, but yeah, um, you know, uh, I don't know. I I don't I don't. I don't feel like I felt in the past where I'm like, I fucking need it. Yeah. And maybe it's because I couldn't get it when I wanted it. And now that I could get it and still want it, I, st- I don't know why. I, I just don't know why. Yeah. Yeah. I remember asking you, I was like, why? I was like, yo, it's time now. This is after, after the hex, <laughs> hex quarters. Like, why? Like, what? You got to do it now. Like, now's the time, right? I was like, are you good? Could you do it? And you said. <laughs> no, don't tell me. You don't want it? me to say it? What is it? You said, I could do it. And like. I wouldn't even notice. <laughs> but, but, you know, that's, that's what, that's how people joke. When of they, course. When they come yeah, from yeah. nothing. Yeah, I think it's allowed. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. Think, I think it's allowed. When you, when you come from nothing and you make it, you can be, you can make jokes about, about being mm-hmm. rich, in my opinion. What's the best rich joke you've ever heard? Mine came from you and it's fucking hilarious. Which one is it? <laughs> <laughs> Which one of the many thousands of jokes that Someone, someone uh, made a, it was like a Desero article or something. It was like the richest people in esports or whatever. And uh, they're going over net worth of everybody. <laughs> and yours was, it was like Nate Shot was like, you know, 18 million. And it was like Hector Rodriguez, 2 million. Uh-huh. And then you said, 2 million. You said, that's how much my cows cost. And I paid in cash. <laughs> It's not, it's not, stop bragging. It's just, it doesn't feel like <laughs> that shit is so funny. I was, I, I, I remember laughing so hard. Um, some finance geeks are out there. That's the worst thing you could do. <laughs> just paying cash. Mm. Yeah, you're just, you're supposed to invest it and pay with the interest. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't. I don't fucking. I'm still in an apartment. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm enjoying my life. Uh, mind, mind, mind your fucking. If you're not a friend of mine, <laughs> don't talk to me about money. When it comes, especially my money. When it comes to uh, like, okay, so I just talked about we just that was a long winded answer, and then we kind of rambled uh, going on about idiots. Uh, eavesdrop, how's eavesdrop going? You still, how's your passion when it comes to eavesdrop? It's different because at the time, I'm not I'm not as diligent on eavesdrop as I was. Maddie and I like talk like, yo, we need to get on the road again, and this, that, and the yeah, other. Yeah. And we're like, nah, nah, we can't. So if it's if it's not easy, like I'm in I'm in that period of my life where. If content isn't coming easy, I am not going to go out of my way to meet it way beyond the middle. Yep. Uh, and what I mean by that is that I would love to do a podcast on a weekly basis, sit down with my friends and have a conversation, this, that, and the other. Uh, but I also appreciate the fact that I have a lot of shit to do here, right? And also, the content that we do here is like the the, the biggest breath of fresh air. And now that we have an, a, a, a podcast network, I don't feel like... They're not being entertained, you know, audibly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If that's a word. So basically you're saying now that the Flycast is popping. Yeah. <laughs> no, the, the the thing with the Flycast is like it's such a good fucking thing. And the only thing that 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 keeps it where it's at and, and, and not allowing it to get beyond is your fucking consistency. Yeah. Don't blame Nick. I'm not blaming anyone. Matt, you wanna back me up here? 
I'm not gonna get into this one. I don't That's think. right, I think Matt. I'm gonna stay out on this. One. Okay. I, I, I used to yell at Matt. Matt, if they're not fucking doing it, you give me a, you give me a fucking call. Um, but you know the the same way where where Optic Intel, nobody was call, covering Call of Duty back then. Yeah. Nobody was covering Call of Duty. Everybody was covering their own esport, and we weren't doing that. No one in Call of Duty was covering esports. So. At the same time, I think that Deserto was sort of launched. Like, we had our own thing. Like, I don't remember how that happened. But ultimately, the, the goal was that somebody needed to talk about Call of Fucking Duty. Yeah. And as a, as, a, as a founder in the Call of Duty esports space, I mean, surely broadly, right? But specifically, this is where I'm from. This is the, the hood I rep, right? Call of Duty. Yeah. The streets of Tujane, Tunisia. <laughs> I don't know about this remake. I got to play it. All right, so... I, I, we needed to do that. We had to fill every single hole that was empty because that was the opportunity. And the second that somebody started covering it, we backed off. That was not our thing. Yep. Um, and, and, and it sort of happens like that on, on everything. Like we didn't have a food show. Somebody has to fucking do it. So I, here I raise my hand. I get the, I get the, the benefit of, of painting graffiti, which I like. I get the benefit of eating. I, I, I like. So yeah. now we have a food and travel show. So that's a good one. Um, there are like, there's no sports in Optic right now we we still have not gotten together as a group of fucking friends who happen to work in the same place for the same fucking goal yeah. to get an intramural basketball team or a softball team and live stream that on a weekly basis yeah. we haven't done that and that to me is like no one else is doing it why aren't we fucking doing it and then i get i get into like this thing where i'm like oh my god and then my, my brain just de like not develops but thinks about four other different like shows and i'm like yo we should do fucking this instead of blah 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 the the, the latest one was two days ago or some bows i hit up embos and we haven't done a, a a collab right we haven't done a, a hex quarters uh, rich and lonely collab um <laughs> this is what i sent them god oh. episode one boom 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 episode two we have to blah blah blah, blah. episode three blah, 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 blah. of like a new show or no, something me and him are gonna so I, I guess I could just tell you, right? So like, I'm like, yo, we're gonna do a collab. Yeah. But the way that it's gonna work is that we're gonna travel to LA. We're gonna meet up with Matt. We're gonna meet up with uh, the Pine Park Boys. We're gonna meet up with Rain. Whatever. I, this is all in the air. I haven't talked to any of these people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Pine Park's easier, obviously, because of of uh, of whatever. But in each and every single one of these things, whatever experiences we experience. Is what the theme of whatever graphic it is that we're dropping. So if we go to Pine Park, uh, we can do a Pine Park, Hex Quarters, and uh, Rich and Lonely collab where it's like a, one of those canvas shoulder bags, uh, this, that. And that's one of the items for the thing. We go with, oh, uh, shit. like, okay. you know what I mean? Like, we go and. So it's like a four, it's like a four part vlog series leading up to it. Promoting the, yeah, the drop. leading up to it. Like oh, what, it, yeah. what it takes to make a collaboration in a drop, right? To show people how to do it themselves, hopefully one day. Yeah. Um, and I just have like these these recurring just fucking show ideas over and over. Like recurring and new ones, recurring new ones. And I, I do this, I do that. And it's not just for that. It's also for like art. I think that, like I have this really cool concept in my head that I think would fucking bang. But I don't know if it would bang. So yeah. the apprehension of like asking the wrong person that will negatively answer or say it's a bad idea when I know it's a fucking great one. Yeah. It's such a risk. Like if I go to Omens, who I respect uh, as an artist, just as an artist. No, I'm kidding. That I respect as an artist, and I'm like, yo, um, what do you think of this? And and he says, it's like, ah, I don't know, not, not my thing. It's gonna affect me. Yeah. And and the confidence that I go into it with. So until I execute, and it's too fucking late, I don't want to ask anybody for any opinions. Um, and it's not just that. It's, hey, what what. Could I fix a car? And if I am gonna fix a car, why don't I fix the car that I've like that that I like from Mount Akina? You know what I'm saying? The eight six, a Toyota. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Why? Why do I feel this fucking need to to do this? Yeah. But yeah. So, <laughs> so when it comes to uh, when it comes to eavesdrop, do you have any? Uh, you know, this is well, episode five of. Um, uh, the the fifth episode that we recorded of uh, of around the bar. You got any uh, as a, as award winning podcast? Both of you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, do y'all have any, uh, any any advice for for me when going into this venture? You already know it. Yeah. Consistency. Consistency. Never yeah. miss a day, even if it's weekly. If it if you have to, when you start a series, you have to commit to fifty two episodes. That's okay. one 
episode every fucking week. Okay. What you and I did with smooth competition and brisk, no one has ever done and will never fucking do. Yeah. It is too tough. It's too hard. It is too tough and too hard. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And it's still, to this day, the best series we've ever fucking created. Period. The fact that that didn't win anything is mind-blowing yeah. to me. I think it was before its time. I, as far as awards. I don't think awards... Were I don't think... Awards back then were videographer of the year and shit like that. There was no, like, series of the year. There was no, yeah. create, there was no content series of the year or anything like that. It was just videographer. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I rope in... Whenever people think of videographer of the year and... and uh, and those those years, like I rope in everything to that, not just vision. Yeah. All the a lot of the, the videographers just like, oh man, he won something because of vision. But yeah. like, I was doing everything on the yeah. channel by yourself. So, with Aaron, I mean, some, yeah, yeah. but some, it was like the majority of the ideas came from. Well, it depends, right? But a, a lot of the 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 great ideas came from you, and you executed them, and you had a little bit of help in graphics and that shit. But the the the, the editing and all that was good yeah. right and i think that that's like the biggest the biggest struggle that we've had so far with with process in my opinion is that it is a fucking netflix level fucking show yeah, period end of story so good yeah but but there's something missing in it that isn't necessarily that makes it an incomplete version of what it could be i don't know what it is because it's so perfect but there is a level that says the, the, there's a level there where I look at it and I'm like, who edited that? Was that Roger? Was that Shaw? Be, when you edited Vision, I knew who fucking edited it. <laughs> yeah. You know, because yeah. because there was, there was, a little, there was, there was some yeah. D, there was some U DNA in it, right? Mm -hmm. When you look at the DNA of process, there's highly skilled people behind it, but where's the elements of their fucking fingerprint? Is where like. You know, you could say that the slow mo shots and the fucking setting of, of the mood is like Rogers, Rogers thing. Yeah. But I don't want to say what's missing. I don't want to say. I don't want. I, I, so Do one, you know what's missing? Yes. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I I can't help it but to notice the little things. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a it's a hard it's a fucking hard show. No, uh, dude. I I I would never be able to create something like that. Yeah. It's just an impossible thing. I would never be so technically smart to figure out how to white balance and f-stop the fucking ISOs, <laughs> right? And then to score it also, like that's just a level of, of, yeah. of mastery that I can't do. So for me to criticize at that level is is a little bit, not disingenuous, but as, as a critic of our thing, yeah. there's, some, there's just one thing missing. I uh, We hit... Uh, the off season was this past weekend of, as of recording this. And one of the incentives that we hit was that I make another vision episode mm -hmm. and I'm kind of nervous. I'm like, dude, that's a lot. Like people, cause people are like, Oh yeah. Like already hyping it up. And I'm like, damn, like I haven't done this in a long fucking time, you know? Uh, so I'm kind of nervous about that, but why? I don't know. I mean, it, it'll be fine. I'll tell you why the same fear that every artist has. Am I, do I still got it? Is, am I, I should be better because I'm older. I okay. should be better because I've learned way more than the younger me. I have more resources than the younger me. I should, by all accounts, be better than I was. Mm -hmm. But. But am I? <laughs> something back here says, yeah. no, the fuck I'm not. Yeah. because I'm, I'm not as hungry. Didn't haven't practiced. At the time you hadn't practiced. Oh, sort of. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, three seasons, like weekly doing it. Like eventually I found a pretty good groove of just. You know, not sleeping and doing yeah. it, um, but yeah. What eavesdrop. About? Eavesdrop is a, is a, is, a, is a horribly. Uh, uh, there's so much more that I could be doing with eavesdrop. So much more. So yeah. I'm not. I'm not just criticizing one thing. Like I don't like any of. The, I think that everything that we do could be a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. Everything. Yeah. I mean, that's just. That's just how you've always been. That's how a lot of us have always been. It's like yeah. there's something that just could make it perfect. Yeah. Very. There are very few optic videos out there that are perfect some of them are really fucking good and they did really really well but not perfect <clears throat> yeah what about you matt you got any advice for me when it comes to this in comparison to eavesdrop it's just consistency yeah yeah that's so, you just gotta want to do it is the the big thing too yeah yeah i think i'm su i mean I'm, i am super passionate and luckily uh you know working with center they they've given me a little bit of a budget just to get people here oh, nice. which is which is something that is a little bit different than any of the podcasts that 
that you know is under the Optic Audio Network because we do the Optic Podcast. Everybody here, Flycast is myself and Nick. You for with the eavesdrop, you tend to go places, and for this, I'm going to bring people here. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's a little bit different, and, and I, I'm nervous because it's a little bit of a outside the endemic. Uh, you know, there's not a lot of Call of Duty players on that list. You're the only one. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm nervous, but I'm, I'm, I'm super, super passionate, super excited, excited. I think it's gonna be something that we can build and, and build off of. So, yeah. all right, man. Uh, that, I think that's where, what are we at, Matt? Uh, an hour and six. <coughs> all right, how, so, how long do you usually do these for? It depends. What's, it, what's your goal for this? My goal for, for my goal for this is, is how many to, episodes? A thousand. Yeah. Yeah. My goal for this is I want this to be my, th- I, I, I think doing the inner circle, I really kind of fell in love mm-hmm. with hosting um i think well i think doing the spinoff sean evans thing that we did with uh with seth uh that really got me i was like oh shit like i like this a lot and uh and so then doing the inner circle and and rogers trusted me with the with hosting that and uh that's gone really well and and then i was you know i'm so glad you did the goat the goat one the goat show oh with the with the with the dynasty yeah yeah that was fun i was so glad that i wasn't there for that why? Because I too would have been like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, oh, about the Nate thing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's been it's been a lot of fun. So I, I think, you know, eventually I have like a bucket list of people that who, I who is your dream guest? Guy Beam. Not Doc. Guy Beam. That's my dream. All right. Uh I don't know if it'll ever happen. It's probably Has he done the eavesdrop? I don't know. Hey, now he's got to choose. Now he's got to choose. <laughs> no, you, you take him. <coughs> no, I, I, cause I, I got a tahin uh, leaf on my. <coughs> anyway, um, so guy beam. Um, yeah, I got some. I got a couple of people. I'd, I'd love to have Colin Samir on. Uh, you know, there are a couple of Minecraft YouTubers, M- Mumbo Jumbo, uh, Iron Solomon. You know, there's there's a, there's some people on. Iron the, Solomon would be a good one. Yeah, there's some people that. When, I, when I, did I you start listening to. to battle rap? Early Google Google video before YouTube. Like, like uh, uh, I would I watched like the 106 and Park uh, Gen battles, and then uh, that eventually got into like those the Smack DVDs that mm. would be re-uploaded onto Google Video, and then uh, from there I discovered Grind Time. How how did that happen to you? Like, uh, well, my mom used my mom was a teacher, so she worked. She would have to work on teacher work days, and my dad would have to go to work, so I would have to come into work with her, and so I would just sit in her classroom while she worked on stuff, and there was no you know students there, so I would just be on the on the computer and on the computer, everything was blocked because of parental controls, except for Google video. So on Google video, I would look up paintball videos and I would look up battle rap videos. Why battle rap? Like, where did you hear about that? I, I, I don't know. I, I think I liked rap, but I liked the competitive, mm-hmm. like I liked, and, and people would like jokingly battle rap at school and yeah. stuff. It was, I had never seen eight mile or anything, but like I knew what eight mile was. Yeah, yeah. So I think I just kind of looked it up one day and then, uh, it's very easy to j- digest the 106 and Park battles because they're like 10, 15 seconds long and it's all freestyle. There's nothing written down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jen was just like destroying people. And I was like, oh shit, nobody can beat this guy. Except so, for Idea. Right. So then Michael I, Larson, rest in peace. So then I looked up Jen battles mm-hmm. and then I saw him battling actual battle rappers mm-hmm. and getting fucking smoked. Yeah. And I was like, how can people, how can people beat who I already thought was the best? Yeah. And then... You know, it's it's a rabbit hole from then on out. I, I, the only reason I said it is because that was one of the weirdest things that I that I like found out about you. Like when you guys when you released that battle video with with a uh, uh, Nick from sixty fifty. I was, oh, I was yeah, like, what yeah. the fuck? That was yeah. like, I was like, how the fuck <laughs> do you know about that? You Dude, know what I mean? It's funny because Nick was like, uh, it's apparently somebody that he because he tweeted out like, you know, give me questions I can ask this new guy who was in the optic mm-hmm. house, and a few people knew who I was and one of them knew I liked to battle. So they were like, you guys should bat- rap battle each other. And I remember he read it. He said, oh, he may want us to rap battle. And, I, and I, in my mind, I was like, you don't, you don't want, want this. this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't want that. Trust me. But, you know, I'm just this dweeby looking white kid. So he's probably like, you know, and I, I knew Nick. Also, also a dweeby looking white kid. Also a dweeby. But I knew he watched battles. So yeah, I knew yeah. he knew what he was okay, doing. Okay, okay. Uh, but I don't think he knew that I did. Mm-hmm. And uh, luckily... The destiny thing had come out, Taken King, mm-hmm. Ava Stream, you know, all that weights and things. It, it all just like lined up. And so I was like, oh shit. And I remember writing it like, am I going too hard yeah, right yeah, now? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that that was that was just 
yeah, that was that was so much fun. I, I just loved. There was a time in my life where I watch I watch rap battles way more than I listen to music. Like I would just listen. I would listen to rap battles. All, all I would listen to is the uh, yeah the Scribble Jam yeah, battles. Dude, when you told me you were at Scribble Jam, I yeah. was like, what? Yeah, painted Scribble Jam two years. The Scribble Jam was like a. It was like a basically it's a hip hop con- convention, right? That's no, a jam. A j- like, well, yeah, a convention. There was a, there was a battle rap. Yep. There was the MC rap. I'm sorry, the MC rap, the battle yep. rap. Uh, the MC battle, the DJ battle, the breakdance battle. Yeah. And then uh, the graffiti thing wasn't that, that much of a battle, I don't because there was no judges. It was just people you just, know, painting. Yeah. Um, but I, I've always liked fucking battle rap for as, as long That's as so I can sick. remember. So when I started seeing it live, I just completely went super backpack kid, uh, like straight hip hop, four elements of hip hop, like all yeah, that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. You know, that's kind of how I, I So I saw Illmatic like fucking win a, a script. Like I saw it Immaculate, happen. Yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. Immaculate, sorry, yeah, Illmatic. Yeah. I was thinking of Nas, Nas and shit. Yeah. Um, so that, that's why I was like, I was so into it too. That you I was, saw him win in real life? Yeah. That, because one of the because he won back to back, I think. And yeah. You, you were there one of those years. That's fucking um, crazy. And what else? Like I saw, I saw a lot of people. Like uh, I saw Idea Battle twice. I saw mm-hmm. one at the at the Chicago Theater, I think, or the House of Blues. Uh, for like a, I think it was like a scribble jam, like, uh, like I don't know, did they travel? I don't, I don't fucking remember what it was, but it was like a scribble jam theme because Mr. Dibs was there, uh, and he was like the organizer of, the, uh, from what I remember, he was like the organizer, yeah, of, of the thing, and and uh, anyway, like I was super. That's why I was like, I'm like, what the fuck? How the fuck do you know about that? <laughs> and then I went. What was uh, before King of the Dot? There was what? Grind time. Grind time. Was it grind time? There was grind time. There was uh, the thing where they were they were battling on the pool table. Mm. I can't remember anyway, what that was called. My boy Matt Fight Club. Yeah, my boy Matt Lock was, was, you know, yeah, a yeah. notorious, you know, uh, Chicago battle rapper. Like I went with him to one of those things, and I remember showing you and Nick me in the background of this, yeah. of this thing, and I'm like, I'm not fucking everywhere. I'm fucking <laughs> jack of all trades out here. Right, you're still you're still a hater on written raps. No, 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 not no, anymore. No, I, I never was. I only said that to you. Okay, okay. Like I'm like, yeah, those are written and shit, you <laughs> know. But obviously, like it sounds way, it's it's way, way, way better. Yeah. Um, but it's the evolution of it, right? That, that that got to it because I do firmly believe that you know the, the scribble jam battles had a lot to do with the, with the ignition of what once what now became uh, what it is today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of parallels. Mike and I talked about it a lot. There's a lot of parallels with battle rap and esports. That's what that's what Mike is saying. He's like, dude, you can get you can get three would if you battle. Mm-hmm. You can get three would but it can be close. You can come back. You can lose first round. You win the next two. He's like, I I I, I see it as a competition, and it's very similar. Mm-hmm. It's very grassroots. We've dealt with where is it going to be streamed? Is it going to be streamed here? How do you monetize this? You know, yeah. we have huge platforms, but we all have day jobs. Yeah. Like it's very similar. Yeah. And I was like, damn, it's like really, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just, it's just like grassroots things that grow, mm-hmm. that become, that people don't know how to monetize yet. There's sketchy businesses that come in that can, you know, tank the entire industry, or, uh, you know, you can continue to grow and continue to monetize and, and figure out the right way to do it. And I think. Yeah. I think battle rap is doing a pretty good job now. Yeah, I, I, I think you and I talked about it before. Like, I, own, I, I don't only like things, but like, it makes it a little bit better for me to digest if there's a level of competition. Yeah. In it, right? Like, my favorite rap is com- competitive rap, right? My favorite yep. sort of, uh, like, if the lyrics aren't good, I don't want to hear it. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, you know, I don't care about the beat. I don't care about like whether it makes me want to dance or, uh, you know, that's why I said I'm not going to the Drake concert. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, Bro, there's. There's a moment in the Drake concert. I was like low key, like thank God Hector's not here for Why? this. Why, bro? Drake's singing. Bounce that shit like whoa. Bounce that shit like whoa. Oh, that, he, she wrote that shit like a soldier. She write that uh, like a soldier. And while he's singing, there's sperm swimming around the stage. Yeah. A, a, a circle of sperm. Back Yuck. me up. Back me up here, Matt. Oh yeah. Circle yeah. of sperm because the whole stage is LED. And I was like, is that sperm? Yuck. I was looking at. It. And then I look up. And there's a big ass floating sperm. No, going around the whole venue. Why? Like I don't know. What did it represent? I guess nut. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. DNA. I, yeah, I, I was just like, damn. And, then, and I was like, he got too metamis- metamorphical, metaphysical with that shit. <sighs> yeah. I yeah. I, you know, I told you I just gone back from idiots. You and, were tired. Oh man, I did not. Uh, no bullshit, dude. I didn't want to do anything for yeah, like four I don't, days. I don't think I saw you until. Off season, <laughs> like, yeah, until like, the off season event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember being so tired when I got there that I said on stream, "I'm like, Jude dragged me out here." I'm like, "Man, that probably sounded really bad. Like, I didn't <laughs> want to be here or something." Uh, but I was, uh, I was just like, you know what? This is the truth. 
Is, you uh, know, if she wouldn't have like help me say it's like yo you gotta go yeah, yeah, yeah. i probably would have been like yo man you know you know you know i support everything you yeah, do, yeah, but yeah i'm just fucking tired I, I i need some fucking time to reset because i was about to go back into you know into into working and having phone calls throughout the throughout the filming days yeah is not the same as doing business in person right like it, it takes a, a a a different level of switch because it's like back to back to back to back to back to back and that's and, and that's all there is so yeah have you have you enjoyed your your time as a corporate uh, as a corporate dude? Uh, to be in every fucking meeting, pay attention mm, in every fucking meeting. Yeah, uh, I'm. I haven't had a chance to really enjoy it because I don't think I'm very good at it. Sure, listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I should have. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody. Like everybody thinks is like is like. I want to be CEO one day. No, I don't think that. You I don't. don't. No, I don't want to. I, I either want to get. I either want to get the the call where they're like, "Hey, we found someone else." Yeah. Or I want to stay exactly where I'm at. Yeah. I'm super cool with being a creative yeah, director course. forever. Yeah. But even you know, I don't want to go higher. No. I don't want to go higher. No one does. I'll go higher in other shit like mm-hmm. like this shit. Like if this turns into something, yeah. sure. Yeah. Like yeah. I'll, I'll run it. If TST, if somebody hits me, hey, well, let's do something with TST. Sure. I got. I got a. I was talking to somebody in sales, and they're like, "Hey, you know, there's the show's really good. There might be a possibility where like Netflix is kind of want to blah blah blah." And I'm like, uh, "Idiots." Uh, yeah, I was like, mm, "I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if like because you know, idiots were doing with one dude, right? Mm-hmm. And he's doing obviously like Netflix level shit. Netflix because we went to the same taco spot. Netflix brought, brought 12, 24 people, <sighs> and they only used ten seconds of of that. I am too controlly from from a content perspective. Where that couldn't work for me, I'm not working with people that I don't know because I am going to assume that they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. If the, yeah, because sometimes there's just too many people. I've 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 done jobs as I'm, I'm super grateful we did the jobs, but we walk in, Blake George and I walk in, and I'm like, why? Mm-hmm. Why are there 20 people here? Mm-hmm. We need one shot mm-hmm. and one person to tell us what to say, and mm-hmm. that's it. Mm-hmm. And then there's you know, catering and makeup mm-hmm. and all, all this shit. And I'm just like, damn, somebody. Yo, give us that money. Yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll do our own makeup. Yeah, yeah, I'll, the, How about this? You take catering away. I'll, I'll make sandwiches for everybody. <laughs> It'll cost the same. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're, I'm good, man. Don't, don't, yeah, we're, this guy's I, I, about to make us another. Damn. You saw him? He was fucking ready. Look at him. You can make yourself one. Make you and Matt one. Matt, you want one? I mean, if you're going to make them, sure. Oh, yeah, shit. Yeah, boy, yeah, Matt. Make, make Matt one. Actually, you could probably top me yeah, off, too. Yeah, you could. I'm, I just keep. I just fill. Yeah, this he'll up just with, he'll just do this one. Just fill the yeah. Fill yeah, that dump, one dump with cranberry. Right. Well, I want some of that tahini on it though. All right, guys. Well, that is going to do it for around the bar with Hector Rodriguez. Hector Raúl Rodriguez Hernández, alias El Herculano. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, definitely go tune into the Optic Nation membership program. We're going to shoot behind the bar now. If you guys don't know what it is, we play beer pong and we answer some goofy questions, and it's competitive. I'm, if at the, at the end of the season, mm-hmm. whoever makes the le- whoever makes the the all the cups and the least amount of throws wins. Who took eighty eight fucking throws? Who took eighty eight throws? So, like I said, Tweedledee, Tweedledum. The, so they both missed forty four shots. So we all so. Between the three of us. I was making shots. I wasn't making very many shots. Well, we, we, they kept, we kept missing. Okay. We kept missing. But then Mystic and I, Brandon and I, we, we nailed it. 14 cups. It's pretty good. So at the end of the season, at the end of 10 episodes, somebody gets a trophy. So we're, you're playing for a trophy right now. All right. Sounds good. How's your, how's your sobriety level? Oh, I'm good. You're good? All right. Definitely go check us out there. Uh, if, in, in the meantime, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.